Hi everyone, so it's Adam here from Hair System DIY. Today I have James with me from Cheshire Hair Clinic. Uh, he basically sort of runs this clinic with Sally, is that correct, James? Yeah, Sally's my business partner, yeah. Uh, James is a hair system wearer himself and he decided to set up this clinic salon because he felt there just wasn't enough support and I completely agree with him um, in helping guide people through the, the hair system journey. So, James, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, how are you? Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, I'm great, thanks. The sun is out today for a change. I mean, yeah. for those yeah, of you not living good. in the UK, the weather has been awful. <laughs> yeah, it's like one day it's kind of good, and then the next day it's freezing cold, and yeah. very. I'm it's getting a lot of allergies at the moment as well, and I think it's related to that. I think the immune system can't keep up. Yeah, yeah, agree, agree. <laughs> <laughs> So, so tell me a bit about yourself, how you sort of first got into hair systems. Had you tried um, other hair loss treatments before you came to hair systems? And also, how did you discover hair systems? Yes. So um, to answer that kind of what happened before systems, I started losing my hair from the age of about 25, 26. Um, I've got the typical male pattern baldness um, recession. Um, and it just kind of creeps up on you over time and you don't really realize it until you look in the mirror one day and you went, blimey, it's, it's all gone. Um, I was losing hair quite a lot and, and I, I looked into various things, but I did try the, um, regain mousse, um, with the minoxidil mousse that you put in your hair twice a day, first time, first thing in the morning, first thing at night. Um, and it's kind of the results are kind of split from 30, 30, 30. So 30%, 33% of guys um, see some form of hair regrowth, even if it's kind of a small amount of hair. Another 33% don't see any change at all, but they don't lose any more hair. And then the rest of the guys will still lose their hair and it won't make a, a job difference. I was the guy that didn't lose any more hair, but it didn't grow anymore either. So I'd kind of stopped it. But it was costing me, you know, a fair amount on a monthly basis to have this mousse, but I wasn't actually getting any more benefit out of it. So um, I just did some research into hair transplants and other alternatives. Um, and I came across hair systems. I'd never heard of them before. This was probably about six years ago, seven years ago. Um, and it was amazing because was, there was this video of this guy swimming in a pool and he gets out of the pool and it's like, he has his, his hair taken off afterwards for a refit. And I'm, I'm like, wow, so that's not his hair, but it looks just like his hair. And I don't have to go and get a transplant. So I don't have to worry about the cost and, and the pain or the guarantee, you know, the results if they're guaranteed or not. Um, and whilst I completely support hair transplants as a choice for hair loss, for some guys, it's just not feasible um, if their donor area isn't enough or if they just don't want to have to go through the surgery. So I, I was one of those guys. I was like, I don't want to put myself through that pain. Came across hair systems and um, yeah, that that's really where it all started. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you when you're talking about the uh, hair transplants in terms of sometimes you don't have enough donor hair, so it's, it's, it, it won't fill enough of the boarding area on top of your head. On yeah. top of that, sometimes it just doesn't. I've seen quite often that people, they get a transplant and then within a couple of years, they're going to need another one because the hair falls yeah. out or they don't take any medication, which can maybe maintain the hair that they still have, like exactly. Pleasure or Monoxidil. And I still think with hair transplants at this point in time, um, they are still not advanced enough to fully justify it as a solution for everyone experiencing hair loss. You're right. And we've got quite a few clients who actually have had a hair transplant initially thinking that would solve all the issues. Um, but they have it and either the, the hair is too diffuse and you can still see through the scalp. So through, through to the scalp. So it looks very patchy. It looks like you're balding anyway. Mm -hmm. um, or they've then gone back and gone and got SMP to fill in the gaps, which is like a tattoo, which kind of goes inside. And that's permanent, right? You know, you can't get rid of that. So for me, I, I just thought, personally as a choice this was the right thing for me i can change a system whenever i want i can have it any length any color any density yeah. it was kind of carte blanche for me um but it was a big learning curve and if you're not used to having hair and looking after it that's when you need the support i think absolutely absolutely couldn't agree more with you and i think what's so great about hair systems when you compare it to for instance transplants with transplants there's no guarantee you're going to get what you want uh in terms yeah. of the appearance and the density at least with hair systems, you have that flexibility to choose what density you want. 
if you have grays you can choose a percentage of grays if exactly. some base doesn't work for you you can choose another base we've got lace we've got polys we've got monofilament silk um yeah you get it it's it, you just get a heck of a lot more flexibility and a lot more control over the kind of appearance that you're going to get exactly yeah mm. okay so tell me about your journey through setting up cheshire hair clinic so you've got some systems fitted yourself you found there wasn't yeah. much support out there so tell me about this the continuation of the journey for you yeah so um i started wearing systems and uh, i went through a couple of different suppliers one was kind of like a standalone guy who wasn't a hairdresser but supplied the systems and they were cut almost pre-cut but it didn't really suit me and the systems themselves weren't very good quality so i then i then moved on to another um clinic that was close to home at the time and they were great but i got the impression it was very much a get you in the chair get your hair system installed and get you out the door as quickly as possible and take your money um, and whilst I appreciate there's a business element to it and no one would be in it if they weren't making money, um, there has to be another element to it because it's not just like a haircut, right? You've got so much going on psychologically with a guy who's lost his hair and is about to get some new hair. Yeah. Um, and it's about preparing them for that before that. It's about kind of walking them through the process. And then after installation, for me, it's about supporting them and, and going through it. Now, we've got a lot of clients which are very experienced hair system wearers, and they don't need any help from me at all. But there are a load of guys that come through. They see the videos that you saw the other day. And, you know, we got a viral TikTok video that's gone crazy. And I don't know why that's happened, but it's, it's amazing. Um, but uh, we've, we've then got a load of interest from guys who who have, don't even know what a system is. And they're like, oh, yeah, book me in. I need hair. I need hair. And it's about educating them and kind of guiding through the process. So Sally and I set up Cheshire Hair Clinic with that in mind, really. So, yes, we provide hair systems, but we also provide the background support and guidance, which is really important for, for new hair system wearers. Um, and, and we think it's really important that they have that following their journey through. So once they're more confident with it, you know, they they know that they can deal with a slight issue. If there's a problem that they've overcome before with our help, they know they can do it again on their own. So it's about empowering them really to kind of be confident with it and keep at it because, you know, sometimes it's not easy and we all come across problems. We just have to get our toolbox out and work out, you know, which tool to use to fix it. Yeah. And, and I'm so glad you mentioned about the emotional and mental component as well, because, yeah. you know, for me, actually, the most important part is actually dealing with the human um yeah. and the stress and emotional anxiety they've been through experiencing hair loss even that is in my opinion is actually more important for taking care of that than actually getting the hair on the head because okay. i remember when i first got my first system cut in and i'm slightly different to male pattern baldness um sufferers in that i do have an element of that i've also got a condition called trichotillomania which is uh, an urge to pull your hair out I've had it for 30 years um but she, i remember the first cut in i got um, the lady shaved the top and I'd never seen my head ball and it was quite a distressing situation without getting a warning um, so having that emotional support throughout the whole process I think is so important and when people are struggling uh, where they don't know how to do maintenance themselves in the early days they really need that you know that mental encouragement as well and that emotional encouragement and support yeah I agree and and, and the thing is it's it's one thing not having hair, but if you've not had hair for a long period of time and then within two hours you have hair, mm. mentally, psychologically, it's a big shock. It's, it takes a while for your brain to kind of look yourself in the mirror and go, wow, that's me and that's okay, rather than going, blimey, what, what's happened? And it can be quite a shock. Um, I think I think guiding guys through that is really important. And and we, we do things like provide an aftercare guide for all of our clients, but they also have access to myself and loads of other resources. So if they need that support, they've got it there on tap. And um, I, I think that's really important with, on a pro service that we provide. It's not just about, about getting guys in as quickly as possible and out the door. It's about introducing them to the system. You know, like you were talking about earlier, bases, What's your lifestyle like? Do you go to the gym regularly? You know, do you wear hard hat for work? Or, you know, all these kind of stuff you need to take into consideration before yeah. you even start talking about the hair system itself. Yeah. Build a picture yeah. of that client. Absolutely. And if you wouldn't mind, would you be able to sort of walk us through from first consultation um, yeah. to sort of, you know, six months down the line? How do you sort of go step by step at the salon? 
Yeah, so initial consultation is obviously organised through CHC, either myself, Sally or, or Sophie, who works for us as well. Um, we'll get you in for a consultation and then we'll spend a good half an hour, 45 minutes with you talking about your journey so far coming up to here, you know, your hair loss, how it's happened, why it's happened. You may have had a hair transplant. It might just be the fact that you've got, you know, male pattern balding and you, and you don't want that anymore. You want a, a resolution to it. Uh, and then we build a system around them. So although you can get standard stock hair systems, every single system that our client has is individual to them. So in terms of density, um, the base thickness, so whether that's uh, a poly base or it could be a hybrid, which is a mixture of poly and lace, a full lace, uh, as you were talking about earlier, monofilament, silk, all that kind of stuff. We ask them all the questions to build a picture and to design a hair system for them. It's a bespoke piece, effectively. We then talk about you know matching their hair colour, their greys, if they've got anyone, any grey inclusions, um, and density and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then time frame between... Uh, the consultation and install is typically four or five weeks. Um, if if we can get them in sooner, if they need it sooner for a function or whatever, then we, we try our best. But typically it's around then. Um, and then once they've had their uh, installation, uh, Sally will give them a, a, a guide, a, a hair system kind of aftercare guide and then i follow up with them straight after saying how you're feeling then the next couple of days after that i'll then message them saying just checking up everything okay you know i may get a reply saying oh i've got a bit of a lift here or i'm not sure why my hair's doing like this or can i come in and get it get it cut down a bit more because i feel like it's huge even yeah. though it's not you know that kind of stuff um and then it's just a case of kind of just touching base with them regularly giving them the resources that's that they need and the help that they need and then what will normally happen is they'll get a lift again, but they won't need to contact me then because they know how to deal with it. So we provide all the kind of aftercare products as well. So things like hair system friendly shampoos, conditioners, um, hair hair paste, um, hair dust, all that kind of stuff that's all suitable for hair systems. So they can go away with a with a full toolkit, if you want, of, of everything that they need. Oh, excellent. And and regarding sort of regrooms, for, especially for guys who are sort of very early in their journey, do you sort of recommend coming in every four weeks or something like that for a regroom? How does it work? Yeah. So in my experience, the more active you are, the more refits you're going to need to do. So we've got some clients uh, and our age of our clients ranges from 19 to 71. So we've got a, a wide variety of guys. The Typically, the older the guys the further apart their refits are going to be, but the younger the guys, because they're more active or they're working and, and they're doing a lot more refits kind of get squashed together a bit closer. So we offer a couple of options. One is obviously come in whenever you feel like you need a refit. Um, and that's going to be determined from day of install. We'll then see how you go, maybe book you in a couple of weeks afterwards, just to then check to see how the glue or the, or the tape is holding on your head. Um, and then that will give us a picture as to, OK, you need a refit every three weeks, every four weeks, every two weeks. Um, but typically, the more active you are, the more ref refits you're going to need. And what I'm very keen to do is speak when I speak to new clients is to say, look, it may say you can have a system on your head for six or seven weeks at a time. But actually, in reality, one, is that healthy for your scalp? And two, um, you're never really going to get that if you're a fireman and you're working out five days a week. Yeah. So it's about it's about everyone's different. Everyone's skin and sweat makeup is different. It, all of that has an impact, and we won't really know your schedule until we get you booked in, and uh, and we have a look first off. But we also do on the refit side uh, a service where we'll show them how to refit at home if they want to. So we don't tie anyone in to come to us. If you want to do it and refit it at home, we'll give you all the instructions. We'll tell you what kit you need at home. And um, I've been known to phone people who have gone on trips to like America on work and things. And I'll just go through the refit process with them on on call. Excellent. So it's not about, you know, coming into us and, and chucking, chucking some money at us uh, on a th three or four weekly basis. If you want to do it at home, that's cool. And it, actually, I prefer that because it gets people much more comfortable with the systems themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that independence piece, um, knowing how to sort of do maintenance yourself, it gives you a lot more flexibility and you don't end up in panic mode when you yeah. make a lift or something and you can't get to the salon because, you know, you're abroad or, you know, they're too busy or whatever. I, I think yeah. actually having that independence after, you know, I usually say to people, go for at least a couple of months so you know what the process is. 
with me yeah. before even trying to do it yourself. And I, I kind of learned the hard way. I, I went for one regroom, I think. And then I was like, oh, you know, I was like, my ego took over. And I was like, oh, I reckon I could do this myself. Bad mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it's really yeah. hard. And there's so many different moving parts that you have to consider. And there's yeah. so many pitfalls and mistakes that you can make. I mean, you know, I'm six years in and I still make, you know, little errors. Um, however, if I didn't have the capacity to correct those errors, I think I'd be in a much worse situation because I wouldn't know how to do maintenance myself. Yeah. And we have had that situation before where guys have gone, oh, I don't need to come in. And so I'll just do it at home. And then they'll phone me the next day going, uh, is it the system supposed to look like this? And there's a massive rip through the middle or, you know, they've or they've left a load of old glue on there and it's just kind of mixed it with their hair and all that kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's par for the course. Uh, but I think if guys take on board the information that we give them, listen to us and then think, right, OK, like you say, maybe come in for a refit for the first couple of times, see how it's done with the support and guidance that we provide in the background, then they'll have the confidence to then move forward and do it themselves if they want to. Or they can come in and have a chat to us as well at the same time. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it sounds great. And it sounds that you guys really um, prioritise customer service as well as actually, you know, getting their hair done. And, you know, I've heard from multiple people where they'll, they'll just go in somewhere. I'm not going to name names. But there's some places that you go in the UK and there's no actual genuine customer service. They want to get you in um yeah. every two weeks they'll charge you through the nose and they they basically take advantage of people because people are in a vulnerable situation and it sounds like mm -hmm. you guys are actually the opposite of that you really prioritize the customer and the yeah. human comes first ahead of anything else yeah and in terms of price you know you can there are some places again not naming names which will tie you into a set number of hair systems at the very beginning so you have to keep going back to them to get, get that supply you know, the, the cost of the hair systems themselves are extortionate in comparison to what they actually cost for a supplier. Yeah. But from, from our perspective, I think we're very fair with our pricing, but we also include that support element, which has a cost to it and it is it is a value to the client. So they are they are happy to pay for the system and that support moving forward because it is a good deal. And and yeah. I think people appreciate that. Um, and, and like you say, we do focus on customer service more than anything else. And the psychology around telling guys, you know, what do I tell my mates down the pub? Yes. Or, you know, or I've, I've kept it a quiet from my work. How am I going to, how am I going to deal with it? You know, having those conversations with guys, it's, yeah. um, it's really important. Yeah. Yeah. It's all those intangibles that you can't even put a price on. You know, stuff like, you know, communicating effectively with your family members when you get a yeah. hair fitted, or as you mentioned, with work colleagues and that kind of thing, and sort of navigating that path because it can be really tricky and it can be terrifying for a lot of guys. I found it terrifying myself. Uh, it took yeah. me a long time to, but, you know, be yeah. honest about it. Um, and people I know, understandably, because I think they haven't been given any sort of guidance, they don't feel comfortable in telling any. I know even guys who their wife doesn't know. I'm like, I don't know how you manage that, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. We've <laughs> got guys who've got, if you've got partners who, yeah, and we've got guys who've got partners who don't even know. Um, wow. And yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's great for us because obviously we're doing a good job. We can, mm. we can do a hair system and it's completely undetectable. But mm. from, from a, I would, I wouldn't advocate that personally. I would be open as much as you possibly can. And um, as a, as a, as a business owner and a hair system wearer, I always love to actually bring it into conversation because they'll say, Oh, you're, you, you're in the hair industry. What do you do? And I was like, well, I, you know, lost my hair when I was 25 on bald. And they look at you a bit like, what? Yeah. And, really? and it just, yeah. And you just have that conversation with them and it just opens up uh, another world, which they never thought even existed. So, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing service that, that we offer or that the hair system community offers and i have to say the hair system community in the uk is growing very quickly at the moment and there is a hell of a lot of quality uh, providers and suppliers out there um that do just as good a job as us um and and you know we we have people come from all over the uk but if there was someone that was you know really really far away we would know that the right kind of guy locally or place locally that could that could help them yeah and, and let, let's talk about that because you mentioned in, in Britain, the UK is it's definitely uh, gaining more recognition. It's becoming more common and more popular. Um, what do you think that comes down to? Do you think it's a changing of traditional British attitudes, which were very stiff up a lip, get on with it, you know, shave your head? What, what's your opinion? Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think I only have to look at some comments on 
TikTok videos or, or or Instagram or stuff, where it's just like, oh, just man up and go bald. Why don't you just just brave the shave? And it's like, well, why should you have to? Yeah. You know, you never say that to a woman no. who was getting extensions because she had thinning hair or, or, you know, you would never have that same attitude. And I think British values are changing. Um, and what's quite interesting to see from a demographic perspective is the most interest we get are from either guys that are fairly fairly older so you know kind of 60 plus who have spent most of their adult life bald and have gone actually no it's 2024 now i don't have to do this anymore i want i want hair now and who don't really care anymore or the main kind of demographic is guys that are kind of like late 20s to um early 40s who have grown up in a society where i think actually that is quite outdated that kind of view of well, just bald just just shave it off you'll look great um yeah. What, what that opinion doesn't recognise is how that person feels uh, under light at night time and feels about how their head kind of shines off the light or yeah. if they go outside and it's windy or it's rainy and it mucks their hair do up that they've spent hours putting hair fibres in and hairspray and all that kind of stuff. Um, the amount of guys we've seen that have come out of the clinic and they're absolutely shocked in a good way because they it knocks years off you anyway yes. because hair does that. Um but it just changes them. You can see it. It lifts them. It increases their confidence. It makes them feel so much better about themselves. And I, you know, people who say I'll oh, just shave it off and all that kind of old fashioned um, rhetoric is is just really not not popular anymore. And um, and I think a lot a lot of stylists now, which we train as well, we train stylists in this. Um, they're realizing that too. And to offer that as an extra service on top of what they do is is a great thing. Yeah, yeah, and and. In relation to people in their 20s and early 30s who you just mentioned, I think when we look at now in 2024, the online dating game is completely different to what dating was yeah. like in the 80s and the 90s. And with dating apps now, women will be swiping through and they'll probably pick a guy with hair over a guy without hair because they don't look at the personality. They're just seeing an image and they have a second to swipe right, swipe left. And I think in that respect as well, appearance outward appearance has become more important with younger people i think yeah i agree it's very much more cutthroat isn't it it's not a case of you know chatting to someone at a bar anymore and getting to know them it's a case of being up on their phone and, and like you say having two seconds of well is this person someone who i'm attracted to or not i mean you know apart from jason statham i'm not quite sure phil and grant from eastenders not quite the same kind of level <laughs> um but yeah it, it is all about appearance but but also not to take away from the fact that some people some people feel that there is an identity with them with their hair and and you know they used to have that maybe and that's gone because their hair is gone and they feel like they've they've lost something so by giving them a hair system and giving them something that is realistic that is comfortable that fits in with their lifestyle and that is kind of undetectable that gives them that back within two hours and it's it's just great to see it's incredible it, it, it really is it's, it's a life-changing experience and i think we can both speak from experience on that. It is a lot. The first time you get it, it's life changing. It really is. Um, so it let's is. talk about let's talk about bases, James. So do you generally find that people tend to go more for the sort of the, the thin skins or, or or the lace or what do people tend to like the most in, in the salon? So from 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 our clients, what we normally see is a movement between materials. So we will, they will normally start off on a poly base, unless of course their lifestyle dictates that they need some more breathability. Mm -hmm. I'd say ninety percent of our clients will come in and and have a, a poly base, and it will be a thin skin. So it will be somewhere around the zero point zero six to zero point zero eight kind of thickness, very standard thickness base it's very good from a durability perspective but also it's thin enough to be realistic enough so if you have an updo or if you want to show your hairline you can do but what we find with our clients is if they start there they may go well actually I've started working out more or my job's changed and I'm wearing you know head covering which is making me a lot hotter quicker so is there anything else that we can kind of look at so we then can kind of move to say a hybrid system which is a, a poly perimeter and then in the, in the middle you've got lace so it's fully open to the elements and it, it lets your skin breathe mm -hmm. um and then we have guys that are like actually i want to feel like there's nothing on my head completely you know and we'll look at say swiss lace for example but they're normally the more experienced hair system users who who know what they're getting themselves in into and yeah. and part of my job is to say 
you might want that, but have you thought about the refit? Have you thought about the maintenance? Have you thought about, you know, you're going to have to clean it. How are you going to clean it at home? Because it's very different to cleaning a poly. Absolutely. All that kind yeah. of stuff. It's very delicate. <laughs> it's really is very delicate. And, you know, over the years, I've torn multiple ultra thin skins and Swiss yeah. lace. It's just, just by, you know, putting a cotton ball on and, and occasionally it's just a little bit too hard and boom, it's torn. It. They are so yeah. delicate. And the ultra thin skins, just we, we do supply those and they're great. Um, but we see those more of as, as a disposable hair system. So they'll be worn for, say, three or four weeks. And then when you take them off, the likelihood is you'll rip them as you're taking them off because they're so, so thin. I mean, you're talking 0.02 millimetres. They're thinner than a piece of paper. Um, and they're great from a realism perspective. But long term, you need something that's a bit thicker. And for new clients as well, if they are going to start doing their refits, that kind of thickness is just not is not sustainable for them. I mean, I struggle enough with those, even if I try and do if I wear one, for example, to try and clean one. I've done it successfully once or twice. And the rest of the time, it's just oh, it's a nightmare. Isn't it? it is an absolute yeah. nightmare. Even for experienced users like wearers like us, it's still a nightmare. Exactly. Yeah. 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 OK, James, well, well, tell me, how, how can people find you? Do, do you have um, you've got an Instagram and TikTok, haven't you? Um, We've got Instagram, yeah, uh, uh, TikTok, Facebook, um, yeah. and we also have a website, CheshireHairClinic.co.uk. You can contact us through there. Drop us DMs on TikTok or um, or Instagram or on Facebook as well. And um, and yeah, we'll be we'll be happy to help you guys. Great. And and what are the kind of hours you guys do? Do you are you five days a week, six days a week in the salon? So we're five days a week normally, but we do. Um, we're we're just opening it. We we currently have a, a Thursday night. Uh, slots as well as uh, weekend slots and we're just about to open Wednesday night slots as well so we find that guys that are working full-time they can't get to us during the day but, but they can come at night time so we're just trying to spread that load across the week um, and we've just got a new member of staff as well Sophie who's joined us um, right. who is uh, yeah a hair system specialist too so we are kind of expanding our team at the same time as as welcoming new clients so we'll have lots of diary pot, uh, spots available for people Excellent. Well, James, I'd like to say thank you so much for joining no me. Right. I know for a fact that everyone watching this is going to find this super helpful. And anyone who's based anywhere near Cheshire in the sort of Manchester, Lancashire area, you guys probably see clients from even further away, don't you? Yes, South, South Wales, London, Newcastle, wow, all over the place. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And and like I say, we're happy to help those people and for them to come to us. But the network as it is now we've got a, a really good network of good suppliers and and providers in in pretty much all parts of the uk so we can always refer people as well perfect well that's excellent and thank you so much for um yeah talking with me for this last half hour as i said i think everyone's going to find this super helpful and i'm really hoping that some people will hit you up at cheshirehairclinic.co.uk james thank you so much for no thank you very much thanks for your time